Welcome Home with Barbara Beck, a Good Life 45 original production. Get ready to watch hope happen. Hey everyone, I'm Barbara Beck and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Welcome Home. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of living our lives with gratitude. What does it mean to have an attitude of gratitude when life is smacking us in the face with challenges and problems? How do we thank God in everything like the Bible teaches? In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Well, that's a tough mandate, right? Well, on today's program, we have three guests who will be sharing their God stories with us that involve a great deal of gratitude. Have you heard of a ministry called God Stories Radio? If not, you will want to go to their website and listen to incredibly inspiring stories of others' testimonies that ultimately always involve thankfulness and gratitude. Mike, Fritz, and Tina, who are the host of God Stories Radio, are here today to tell us their own personal stories about how God paved the way for this unlikely ministry for them. Lots of gratitude in their story. But first, let's see if the current ladies have some insight into living their lives with gratitude and modeling that behavior too their husbands and children. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Hi. 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 Great Hello. to have everybody here today. And a couple of new guests, too, as well, right? Yeah. Who wants to introduce our guests? You're down there, Deborah. Oh, Who is this? We have Tom. Tom the turkey. Tom the turkey. <laughs> and? His girl down there. That's right. Thomasina. Thomasina. Yeah. Thomasina. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Barbara, I love the holidays. I do, too. This is my, when I say my favorite time of the year, I love, love, love the holidays. I love all of the family get-togethers. I love the cooking and the eating and <laughs> everything to do with it. Um, and having everybody a in your home and mm -hmm. just, just being able to be together and to talk about all of the wonderful things that God has done throughout the year. Do you all do yeah. that? Yes. Yeah. I mean, we're intentional at Thanksgiving. Yes. To, to, all right, tell me what are some of the things yeah. that we're you all do. We're intentional every day with that. Wow, oh, good. No. My husband actually started a gratitude book about seven years ago. Good. And it's been the greatest thing. And we, it, we were just looking at it again last night, just going back, you know, because every day, like I told you, we look for the blessings every day. It, it gets me through. And so we were looking back of all the silly and crazy things that we put down. <laughs> It might have been a parking space, but then there were some big things in there yeah. that God provided. I think it's so important. I'm sorry. A parking space is a big thing. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, the last thing I want is to have to walk from the back of the line to get to the mall. You that's a big thing. I literally started thanking God even for the parking space that's way. And let me tell you why. Every time I do it, I think, chance to walk. I've got my Fitbit on, and I'm like, okay, i got to get to 10,000 miles today. So I'm trying to change. Or steps. steps. Yeah. <laughs> I know, hey, it's let me impressive. live in my own world, girl. Come on, 2,000 miles. But, uh, you know, I just think the importance of us every day. And so at our table, every night when we sit down at the table, we go around after we say our prayer. We always take a deep breath in. We're like, okay, everybody, let's breathe in. And we do that. It's Good. like we got to get rid of the day and the craziness and get into the moment. Mm -hmm. The moment of... I'm coming and, to your house. Like yes. changing your... But we have to because it's so chaotic. Know. And then my husband, we go around and say, everybody tell me something that you're thankful for today. And it's funny because our kids, sometimes that'll be the same old thing. Oh, I'm thankful for mom and dad. Thankful. And we never make light of any of it Good. because every day, Good. be thankful for mom wow. and dad. Right? I'm to be thankful for us. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But I just think there is power. It's that attitude of gratitude that we talk about mm -hmm. so much. There's power mm -hmm. in just getting a grateful heart. Right. Mm -hmm. And why do so many of us only do that intentionally at Thanksgiving? I'm so glad to hear you say that it needs to happen all year long, and it does every single day. But let's go back to Thanksgiving and talk about those <laughs> yeah. of us who only do it once a year or one day. <laughs> all right, Leah, what, what do you all do? Um, so we have a big family. Um, my dad is one of four children, and then they had 12 grandchildren. Wow. And now all 12 are married, and there's 34, 33, 34 great-grandchildren. Wow. So, but they don't all 
all live here, but last year most people came, and we had, I think, 57 people at my house for Thanksgiving. Wow. That's this great. year it'll be smaller. But I'll tell you, it, now I'm thinking about it because we're sitting here talking about it. The neatest thing that happened last year is the, the um, grandkids that are getting older, um, and now social media is such a thing. They created their own little Snapchat thread, and it's just, all the girls did it, and then all the boys did it. And it's the cutest thing. And this year, they went and visited each other. So one girl is at one school, and they all went up. And it's just so now they're they're interacting throughout the year and not just at Thanksgiving. Yeah. And it, to me, yeah. like that's what I'm most thankful for is those family close relationships. Mm-hmm. It's just. Oh, it's just you can't put a price on it. You know? And the sweet potato pie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm grateful for sweet potato yeah. pie. Yeah. Food, yeah. all of food, it. Food, 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 food. 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 Well, there's certain things that you don't really eat, like, all year. Yeah, yeah. You kind of wait, like, right. a turkey. They yeah. don't say it out loud. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't have this feeling. Yeah, but you don't normally have... And How stuffing. About the dressing. You oh, stuffing, you don't get that. I make dressing. I don't make stuffing. Mm. Yeah. There's a difference. There is. You do. There, there is. is. Dressing. We do the dressing, yeah. dressing too. Yeah. yeah. You know, what? and I love cranberry sauce. Why do we only well, do that one time? Too. I love I it. Really? Yeah. I have well, it year round. Because oh. it's pure sugar, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for just putting that right in my face. I mean, it is what it is, right? What, well, what do the Salgueros do? Yeah, the Salgueros. Well, my mom is the oldest of 15. No. Wow. Yes, 10 boys and 5 girls. And my dad is the oldest of seven. So we have a very large family. Yes, you do. I am the I oldest have. grandchild of 52 grandchildren. <gasps> 52? On I thought 33 combination was of both sides of the family. That's crazy. So we have a huge, huge family. Either we go to New York or the people from New York fly here. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes. But we not only celebrate with our family, and I mention this because not everybody may have family mm-hmm. to celebrate with. That's right. Sometimes the That's holidays right. are very difficult right. to some people. So we celebrate in church as well. Yeah, good. We with all good. of the ministries, and we have our sunrise service on Thanksgiving morning, and everyone is welcome to come. And we also provide lunch lots and lots of food and desserts mm, and good, we just good. party at the congregation at the church just I mean almost every single weekend so yeah. good well I'm one of them that doesn't I have a I've come from a large family but a lot of them have passed away and mm. stuff like that so our family is a little bit uh, disjointed at the moment but we what we do is to keep it from being a sad time and especially for my children I want them to have lots of family and friends we invite a lot of people who don't have family clothes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we just have a big shindig. We come over and we Good. have some friends that come over and play piano. We have some that play guitar. And we literally, everybody brings food. And, uh, you know, we'll either go to somebody else's house. It doesn't matter where That's we so end great. up. We mm-hmm. don't get hung up on that, you know, because we're all just celebrating life that mm-hmm. we have. And, we just always have fun, and a lot of times we'll end up playing games and just being silly, you know. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's about whether our, I mean, it's great if you have your family. Like, I, I listen mm-hmm. to you, and I think, oh, God, I want that for my children. Mm-hmm. I want, we're starting that tradition now. But for those who don't have it, we have to pick up and go, what are we going to do to make this a special sure. day? Because right. mm-hmm. I want it to be special for my mm-hmm. kids. For sure. And, sure. Um, so, and, and it is. Well, we have a big family and um, extended family, and then we have everybody in 30, about 30, 25 or 30 oh, of us come yeah. to my house every year, along with Tom and Thomasina. Oh, and they I go just, to your house too? Oh, they live at my house oh, all year they, long. They, yes. Oh. They, they are really there. Yeah, oh, they are okay. there. And so what happens is that Kristen, my daughter, um, one year, several years ago, made Tom the turkey with all of these blank feathers. And so, you know, in the years past, we had always gone around the circle, what are you thankful for? And everybody's saying, thing, you know, God and family, God and family, God and family. So we decided it was a little bit awkward. Why don't we, and this is Kristen's idea, make Tom the turkey and make feathers, blank feathers, and everybody on their own can just go off to the side, take your pen, your marker, and write on there what you're thankful for, along with, I wish we had done this, along with the year. That's really important to do now that Tom and Thomasina have grown so through the years. But it's just fun to go back, and we all look at each other's feathers. Everybody takes time to go and look at Tom and the feathers from the past. And this is one that Mary Grace did years ago. Mary Grace is nine years old now, but this is her handwriting from probably when she was about five. I'm thankful for family. And she has a little happy face and a little heart on there. And, and I just think it's, 
so much fun. Fun so for the kids, fun, fun for the grandkids. Um, anybody can make these. I'm happy to help you um, know how to do it. I, we'll I come to your house. Yeah, I can't do make it. But it, it really it's is adorable. something. To do it. It is adorable. Here's the downside. Can you imagine what the downside is? Storing it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Where do these guys go all year long? Well, fortunately, I do have a big closet. So I was going to say, uh, they have to have their own closet, They right? have their own closet, yeah, where they live throughout mm -hmm. the year. So, yeah, but it is, it is fun. It's just a tradition, it's a silly just, tradition that we've done that's become very meaningful because of what all we're thankful. But you know, I think I like this tradition. I think I'm going to do it because my grand, too. our grandkids would love. It's yes. a craft, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. And Perfect. everybody does it at different times. The feathers are over in one part of the house and, and the pins and I'll go to everybody else. So just go in your own time. Go over there and write what you're thankful for. Some people draw pictures on their feathers, the artistic ones. Some well, people. Yeah, and you know, know, there's now a store bought one. So I never was the crafty person. Y'all showed me this a years ago. A store bought this? Yeah, it's the same what? thing. Really? And their feathers. Yes. Oh. And so I have that. And I'm okay. laughing at myself like, this is the year. Go ahead and step up and make him. And I, I yeah. still have the feathers from the two years we've done it. Okay. For, but I need to just put them on, you know, yeah, we need to step up. This is yeah. so good. Step it up here. The other later. one is not as good. He's small. <laughs> he's easy to store. Yeah. But he's not as cool But, you know, for those of us who aren't extremely crafty, because when I get into crafts, Kristen my fingers just look not like crafty burnt. at all. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, I walk around. It's like I'm wearing the stars <laughs> and the scars. It's like I'm trying to. Children. <laughs> but um, I saw one yesterday that you just get a big glass jar uh -huh. and they put on it, they wrote real pretty like what I am thankful for, or I am thankful and put like some grass, whatever that brown stuff that looks like grass. What's it stuff called? Moss? No, no, no. <laughs> Anyways, it don't matter. But it's sort of like... Um, raffia. Raffia, raffia. raffia. That's raffia. it. Yeah, raffia. 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 And they just, so it's easy tied. And then everybody just takes a piece of paper and just tosses it okay. in there, things I am thankful for. Yeah. And then you can just go around the table and open it That's up. That's nice, too. Yeah, and I thought, that, I thought well, that might be more my speed. Yeah. Unless yeah. somebody's willing to help me out. Make with a one turkey, of these. right? Yeah. I'm telling you, Carolyn, this, if Kristen can do this, she'll be the first to tell you that she is not crafty at all. It's just taking a styrofoam ball that you buy at some craft store, cutting it in half, spray painting it. I mean, I minimize it because it's like it's nothing because I didn't do it. She'll probably tell you, <laughs> yes, it was pretty uh, pretty difficult, but I don't think so. I don't yeah, think so. I'm I think anybody can do it. my daughter was going to be home from college. She could put that together There for you me. go. There you go. What <laughs> other things do we need to be doing to... Well, you know, I actually have a question for everybody because I think for our viewers out there, it might be interesting because... You know, a lot of times family comes together and it's not always a pretty thing. Yeah. There's, been, <laughs> there's always that uncle. Yeah. <laughs> you know what Everybody I'm has one. Or <laughs> aunt. It could be a woman. Be, Let's be, be honest. We have a rule. Don't talk about politics. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Is how do you navigate around? I think people that are out there are going, okay, I've got family coming. Some it's going to be pretty. Some it's not going to be pretty. How do you navigate around those things and keep a spirit of love and a peace? And when in those odd moments, what do you do? How do you do that? I don't know. We're a singing family, so we're constantly singing. Oh, that's good. We are constantly singing, and it's it's a practice. Um, do you have a piano? We Somebody don't have a piano. Okay. It's you just sing. With, well, we're Latino, so with Moroccan oh, yeah. oh, okay. and a guido. And <laughs> oh, I'm coming to your house. Will you invite me? <laughs> we have something that are called plenas. I don't know if you heard of plenas. Uh -uh. It's with these tambours that you just bang okay. on them. Oh, and yeah. Everybody just, gets one? Everyone gets one. But we also do oh. something that's called matutino. And what matutino is, we travel from house to house, but we surprise them after 1 a.m. Wait, what? what? Yes. No, no, no. It's, 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 a, it's a Spanish tradition. Who are you surprising? Yes. Your neighbors? We, no, oh. no. <laughs> other, other people that we do know, but everyone is expecting a surprise. So you have to have the refrigerator full. What? To, and get ready to receive a matutino. So, so do some people come to your house or you're the one that does that to oh, other people? Oh, yes. Once we hear the doorbell at 2 a.m. and it's it's sort of like a, <laughs> like a serenade. Okay. Uh -huh. Very similar to a serenade. But you, this is during Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving, not from, Christmas. From Thanksgiving to Christmas. Oh, oh, oh it's that is that could happen any time. It could happen oh, at my any goodness. time. I want to do this. After 1 a.m. After 1 a.m. So it invites away. hospitality. You're it, always expecting guests, or you are a guest in somebody's house. Exactly. So that's really spiritual, too. Exactly. I would like it, but not at 1 a.m. I was going to say, yes. how do you stay up? <laughs> yes. Well, no, you wake up once the door How long rings. do they stay? They stay out there until you open the door. 
Oh, and then they go away? And they sing, and they sing, no, and they your sing, and then we have full. coffee. Oh, they we come eat, in. Then we wrap it up, and the person that they visited <laughs> has to go with the caravan to the following house. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So you do this all night long? Yes. Do you do it on a weekend or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so it just yes. happens one time. It just it's happens. not like, but you just don't. Somebody starts. Oh, you don't Someone know when it. You don't know happen. when it That's happens. That's fun. And yeah. Do you all ever start it? Yes, we have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, we fun. have. It's so much fun. Well, but anyway, going back to your question. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah we what do we do with our rules? uncles? Yeah. Well, we have certain rules. We make sure that he's calm. <laughs> and well cared for and nicely fed, but we have rules. We don't talk about politics or anything controversial. It's just dialogue of gratitude. Mm -hmm. That's wow. basically what it is. Good, so. good. Well, and, and I think it, and you even talked about playing games. Oh, we play games sometimes all the time. We watch movies, right. and there will be no alcohol. And I think that oh, that sometimes, God. even if you drink wine, or some of you <clears throat> maybe into some of that. I don't know. We, we're not at our house, but there would never be any alcohol to exacerbate a problem like that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they That's come good. already. I don't know. No, I just I'm just thinking there's people out there because I think that is what do you do? What do you do? And it's do? it's I just helping those that are out there. I know of just how do you navigate those things? And I think what you just said I think is a great thing. I think yeah. is to look at them in love and just be able to say, hey, today let's just be all about gratitude and right. enjoying our time together. I think it's setting. Don't you think setting, setting the those, tone? Setting the mm -hmm. tone. Setting those guidelines. Yeah. yeah. You know, of almost even have a sign up outside your door that says, leave all the stuff outside. Come in and let's have a good time. Yeah. That's you know, good. I think it's really setting your day. <laughs> and it might be thinking? it might be up to the woman of the house or the man of the house to, to set that tone and to put some um, some ground. boundaries. Yeah, mm -hmm. there have to be boundaries, particularly on a day like that. So you can, we can, all of us can be mm -hmm. the peacemaker on that day because there will invariably things might come up. So that's mm -hmm. our job, right? Yeah. Be the peacemaker. Yeah. Well, and mm -hmm. I even looked up like some like questions to ask each other. Okay, let's hear. Oh. I thought, okay. you know, I thought oh. it keeps the conversation because you know those law moments. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, let's just take a think, nap. I don't there think there is no law moments. Well, there is but no just, law well, moments. I'm not thinking about any of us, but I think there is people out there that it is some Thanksgiving and Christmas, they can be some hard times. Mm -hmm. yeah. For mm -hmm. us, it's so easy for us to get in our joy moments. But mm -hmm. I'm telling you, for those yeah. out there, yeah, this is true. a hard time. Some people have lost family. They're alone. And it's just so, anyways, I just was thinking about that. Like, okay. what can we do to help those people? So here's what some, I'm just going to read a few of the questions, okay? What is the one thing that you really appreciate about someone at the table? Mm, that's and I nice. think that's powerful because it gets them talking yeah. about something positive. What is the most valuable lesson you've learned this year? Could you mm. imagine going around and asking that question? What are three things that always make you smile? What is your favorite part of Thanksgiving, which we've asked that today? What random acts of kindness have you received this year? I'm just going through. But you can pull these yeah, up if, sure. if people are so, interesting. Interested? You're, mm -hmm. you're making me think. My dad does this to us all the time, not just at Thanksgiving. He just will say, all right. And we all go, oh, here it comes. <laughs> We're going to go around the table. Mm -hmm. And he asks every time any of us are gathered at a table, he does this. Yeah. And it is really great because, it, I mean, even all of us are always together. You know, he asks some question that makes you think about something, and we have to talk to each other about it. But you know why I love good. that? It's because it's not shallow conversation. Right. You right. really get right. to know mm -hmm. each other. And mm -hmm. I feel like we live in such a society of today. I mean, we're all really open people. When we get together, we just lay it all out. We're, but most people don't do that. And I think when you get people, your children, and get people used to ask them that you care, mm -hmm. I think it gets you intimate. It gets yeah. you opening yeah. up and really building personal relationships mm -hmm. that are deeper than how are you, oh, I'm fine. You know, right. one thing that we've started doing for birthdays, which is what you're reminding me of, I think that is so good. I'm going to start doing some of those questions, too. But we do at birthdays, whoever the birthday boy or girl is, mm -hmm. everybody goes around the table and they tell what you love about the birthday person. That's so and good. so that birthday person is usually, it was Charlie recently, his little face, he was just glowing by the end oh, of having, yes. every, you know, his siblings mm -hmm. had to say something nice about yes. him, which is not always easy to mm -hmm. do. And so I think that's something that's been, along those same lines, something that's been really valuable for our family to affirm. 
affirm each other. When we do graduations or did back when our kids were young enough to graduate, now they're grown up. But we used to do the same thing. We call it our time of affirmation where you affirm that person. Oh, nice. And those memories, I don't think they leave them. I think mm-hmm. they really do stay with them. They do. Oh, the spoken word is so mm-hmm. valuable right. for people. And I think that we need to really realize that more and more is so many times we have marriages that the husband and the wife have not spoken yeah. anything kind to each yeah. other in so long that mm-hmm. the the wife is just dying inside. Yeah. And she's going, do you see me? Do you love me? Is there anything good about me? And even mm-hmm. men, I think you have mm-hmm. men going to the wife because we can nag and we can complain so much. And the man is saying, but do you see me? Do you love me? Have I done anything to bring mm-hmm. something to this family? Yeah. Our children, mm-hmm. you know, our children just want to be celebrated. And I think Honestly, in this attitude of gratitude that we're talking about, it's so powerful if we can begin to speak life over one another. You know who does that well is the Jewish community. Mm. Do they? They do, they do bat mitzvahs oh, and bar yes. mitzvahs where that child is. And, and actually, so the, the kin, queen, quinceanera. What, quinceanera. They, mm-hmm. You guys do that too. You guys, you're not, you got, anyway. <laughs> We're all one. I know. I know. Um, but they do honor and find ways to honor their children. Mm-hmm. And and some of us probably do it too much where we affirm them too much. But I think there is a, a real healthy balance mm-hmm. in making that person feel loved and special and created by God. Mm-hmm. Right? Celebrated. Celebrated. You, Celebrate you mentioned something very important. And sometimes we need to be aware of the gratitude killers. Mm. Mm. Gratitude killers all, all, all around us. You know, my my oldest, John Gabriel, who's 13, he's now um, he's in middle school reading literature and all of these classics. And I read sometimes along with him just to make sure that I know what he's reading. And I noticed a pattern: dystopic novels. Wait, mm. talk. What is dystopic that novels? Dystopic novels are, or even dystopic no- movies, The Hunger Games, yeah. uh, mm, um, yeah. Divergent, mm-hmm. where everything around is gloomy and yeah. dark, and there's no end to the tribulation and to the sadness. No hope. No hope. Right. And right. as I kept on seeing everything that he was reading, I said, "Oh, wait a minute, time out." This is a gratitude killer, and this mm. is what they're feeding our children yeah, in true. movies and in books. Mm-hmm. So I've been intentionally, Gabriel and I have been intentional. Mm, okay, so you have to read this dystopic novel, but know that this is dystopia. Mm-hmm. This is this is not the way God wants us to live. We learn That's a awesome. new word awesome. every time we, we do. do. We do. <laughs> I love it. Dystopia. 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 Dystopic novels and dystopic movies. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's, wow. that's recent. What so. does the Bible have to say about gratitude? Oh, I love the scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In everything give thanks, everything. for mm-hmm. this is the will of God mm-hmm. in Christ Jesus concerning mm-hmm. each and every one of you. Mm-hmm. And Psalm 106 verse 1. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Right. Oh, Preach thank it. you all so much Love for it. being here today and reminding us of the importance of gratitude all year long, but particularly if you can find things to do, viewers, with your families here at Thanksgiving that will become traditions and maybe special for ways to, um, to really point to Jesus and how grateful we are for him being in our lives. We thank Tom and Thomasina Turkey for being here with us today as well. We thank all of you and we have more coming up, so stay with us. Coming up next, we've asked people to be a part of the movement Mm -hmm. because we feel like this is God's movement and, you know, we feel that he's he's sweeping, you know, the world right now, just trying to move people to come towards him. And so we just want to get out there. You're watching Barbara Beck on Welcome Home, where we share life-changing stories filled with hope. You're watching Welcome Home, bringing you life-changing stories filled with hope. Hey, everyone. I'm so glad that you're part of our program today. I have such special guests with us today. Um, my heart is just overflowing with gratitude for God bringing this this tr- threesome across our path today. You're going to get a huge blessing. If you've never listened to God Stories Radio, it is every single Thursday night live, or you can go and listen to the podcast, which is what I do all the time as I'm walking. Sometimes an hour a day, I'll just listen to their podcast, and I'll get so much out of hearing the different testimonies 
testimonies from people around the world, and they have just done such a great job with this ministry, and they're here today to be able to encourage you and to tell you a little bit about how God Stories Radio got started, and maybe I'll even have a little bit of time for some of their testimonies as well. I'd like to welcome to the show Mike Jewett. Hey, Mike. Hello. So glad to have you here. Well, thank you for giving us the opportunity. Would not have missed this opportunity for the world. You guys bless me all the time. So thank you. And Fritz and Tina, uh, thank you guys too. I want to thank say your you. name right. Amrine. Yes, you right. right. Metcalf <laughs> Amrine, but me, okay, very good. Nice German name, right? Yes. Yes, very good. And now, you guys have not been married very long. No. Right? How yeah, long? Three years. Three years. <laughs> That's great. So you're still on your honeymoon? Yes. <laughs> we, we'd like to think so, but we have a house full jointly, so. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, very good. Well, let's talk about, maybe, Mike, you can help us know how God Stories Radio got started. Wow. Um, God Stories Radio, uh, there was a bunch of things, you know, first Father gave me the word radio, I got it in uh, on a fast, and uh, in my sleep, or I, 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 it's rim sleep, if I remember correctly how uh-huh. it's called. Um, so you actually saw the words radio? In black letters. Wow. And uh, I went to him again, asking, because Charles Stanley, I just was introduced to Charles Stanley a couple days prior, and and it was July 8th when I went on the fast. And on July 9th, if you go listen to his radio message on July 9th, 2008, it also it said that if God tells you something, you can go back and ask him if you're not sure what's going on there. So I did. Mm-hmm. And the next morning, July 10th, I woke up or in my REM sleep and... Um, in bigger, bolder black letters was the word radio. You saw it again? Yes. Wow. And so what do you do with that? You know God's well, speaking to you, but, I mean, you're not a DJ. You no. haven't had a lot of training in, no. in radio communication, right? I was right? the biggest introvert you would ever want to have known. No way. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So what did you do with that? Um, I started praying about it. What okay. do you want? You know, what am I going to do on radio? Am I going right. to be on the radio? Am I going to work for radio? Am I going to do this or that? But um, then um, in July... Uh, in June of 2010, I, he brought me in so many places. He, and he brought me in seven places in seven years, not my own. And that was five years ago, and I'm still in that place. Yeah. But um, in Chicopee, Massachusetts, um, I was at a picnic um, with a, a group from the church. It was a worship team and some production people and all. And I was actually talking to one of the um, guitar players. And I told him, was telling him about the radio thing. And then shortly before there was given the words, testimonies with like background music. Huh. And he actually said, I would listen to that. Huh. And so um, I would, I, as I looked at the dates and everything else, it was a little bit less than three years later from that point that God Stories Radio did its first session uh, on May 23rd, 2013. So how did you know Fritz? Fritz, now you do have a background in radio, right? I do have a background in radio, and okay. it's kind of funny. The way we met was mm. uh, I was going through a pretty rough time, and uh, uh, Mike and I have a saying uh, called uh, we're tired, mm. and we know that saying, and, and uh, we know what that means. And the night I met Mike, uh, I walked into real life, uh, never having been there before. Um, my brother-in-law just kind of dropped me off. I was really broken hearted and um, I was tired. Were you a Christian at the time? Did you know Jesus personally? I did, you know, but I had kind of set my turn, my back on God. I had Mm -hmm. experienced um, some success in business and gained some wealth and had all the toys and and stuff like that. So um, shockingly enough, the Lord chose to get my attention that way because 2010 was kind (laughs) of a rough year for me. I had to go undergo a second open heart surgery and then my daughter is a special needs child so I ended up becoming a single dad to a special needs child Mm. so I had reasoned in my mind that um, she would be okay that my brother and sister-in-law would take care of her so when I walked into the church that night I was I was ready I was contemplating what to do and uh, and Mikey happened to be at the door I walked into Mm -hmm. a celebrate recovery and Mike was greeting at the door, and he, and he said he never greets. He was filling in for somebody. Mm-hmm. I walked in, he reached out his hand, and he said, How are you doing, brother? And I said, I'm tired. Wow. Like that, wow. tears down yeah. my... I saw his eyes, I can recall it, gives as big as half dollars. Because you got it. You I understood. Knew because I was... You were tired. I was tired 1.2. Yeah. yeah. 
I think what's really important about this, I want you to keep talking about that, though, and our viewers need to hear this loudly and clearly, is that we can be tired as Christians. We can know Jesus and have that personal relationship with him in our hearts, and yet life is tough. Mm -hmm. Life can be hard, and we need to have those antenna up and listen for when somebody is hurting like that. So praise God, Mike, that you understood that. You embraced him, figuratively speaking. He's never left my side ever since. We've been friends ever since. And and uh, we met up for coffee at Denny's. I'll never forget it. And mm. then he says, I've, I've had this this crazy vision, you know, uh, and God keeps telling me radio. Mm-hmm. And then my eyes get as big as half dollars. And I said, my background's in radio. Wow. So, wow. I know we're limited on time, but I got to tell you this. So I said, Mike, why don't you just come over? We'll set up a couple of microphones. Uh-huh. We won't plug them in. We'll, we'll just talk to each other. And this poor guy, he sweat profusely. <laughs> he was breathing hard, and uh, he, he could barely get a word out. And then uh, a month later, we did our first podcast. Just the two was, of you together. Yes, okay. 10 or 11 minutes long. And we uh-huh. looked at each other and went, where did that come from? Wow. And, you know, so that's kind of how God Stories Radio was was birthed. Well, it is an incredibly impactful ministry. And you Thank reach you. Tina, something like you always open up the show telling us about all the Facebook likes yes. and the fact that there are what, 92, how many countries? 92 yeah. countries. 92, 92, 92 countries that 92 we know 92 countries that are listening. Of. See, I think sometimes people forget about the impact that radio can have and actually TV too now because of the internet. Yes. But, but you guys are all over the place. How did you get involved so, with the God Stories? Yeah, it was kind of interesting because I never expected to be a part of it I knew that he was doing it because when we were dating he used to invite me over to come and watch the shows you know while they were recording and so I'd kind of gotten used to seeing what they do and obviously when we got married uh, God Stories Radio needed a new home (laughs) and I wasn't so sure about it I was really reluctant because I'm like do I want all these strange people coming through my home Um, you know and I still had a fairly young son at the time Mm -hmm. so um, Fritz had the the vision to build the studio in the garage, yeah. and God just worked on my heart, and mm-hmm. you know I was okay with that. So um, we have the studio, and we have people come to give their testimonies, and it's amazing. Like I can't imagine life without it. Right. Now. It's a big, but you still all have full time jobs as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what you do on Thursday nights yes. as a ministry right. to help people, which is what I love. How do you fund? God Stories Radio, because I want to see it continue on, because yes. obviously you're ministering to me every week. Yeah, we, we have to rely on sponsors. Okay. Um, and we, you know, we have to rely on people just being touched enough, moved enough that God has moved them to, to donate. Yeah. So, you know, we've asked them to, you know, press, we call it press the button, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but there's a donate button on our homepage. Mm-hmm. And we just, you know, we've asked people to be a part of the movement mm-hmm. because we feel like this is God's movement. And, you know, we feel that he's, he's sweeping you know, the world right now, just trying to move people right. to come towards him. And so we just want to get out there as much as possible. Well, and the other thing, too, Tina, Mike, and Fritz, that's so neat about your ministry is that you don't have to go there in person to give your testimony. No. Even no. though the uh, studio is there in your home, people can call in, which yes. I did, and I, I heard somebody just the other night call in from, from Canada. California, mm-hmm. and people can continue to give their stories. And you even want people, people that are listening today, if you have a testimony, you have a story, and you want to get your story out there. Honestly, when they first asked me, I said, my story is not even that exciting. I don't even want to give my testimony. (laughs) And boy, did God do a work in my heart because they told me, and I'm going to tell you this too, everybody's story is important and it will impact people for the kingdom. Anytime we talk about Jesus and what Jesus is doing in our hearts personally, nobody can refute my story, your story, Tina, Fritz, and right. Mike. Mm-hmm. Our stories are given to us by God, for God Amen. to use. And you talk about, I think your vision is to bring hope and encouragement right. to people. That's what your job is, right? Hope, right. comfort, our, and our, encouragement, right. yes. Our mission statement is bringing hope, comfort, and encouragement through the power of the Christian testimony. And yeah. what, how do you can encourage people, like you had to do with me, how do you get that listener out there today, that viewer who is saying, I've got a testimony, but... I don't really want to say it. So how would you encourage someone today to to call you, to go to the website? It's funny that you would ask that because I call it seed time and harvest because a lot of times we'll 
approach them, plant the seed, they won't be ready. Hmm. And then it takes yeah. the time, that was and then me. all of a sudden, right. like uh -huh. you, a like perfect you. example of that. Six and then months. all of a sudden, the Lord yeah. works on them, and they call us and say, "I'm right. ready." Yeah, we've had several people like that. Some are ready to do it right away, right. and mm -hmm. others, you know, uh, that don't really think. Uh, if I can encourage folks out there that don't think they have a real big story, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a big rock star, and I came yeah. to know Jesus, yeah. kind of thing. Right. You don't. Know, Right. Every story is impactful. Right. But what's the verse that talks about be ready? You know, if somebody mm -hmm. asks you, That's I don't know where first, the verse is. First Peter three sixteen. Good job. It says to be ready to, to give That's an right. answer for why you believe what you believe, right? But so, do it with gentleness and respect. Oh, I love that. Amen to that. I think a lot of times too that people they don't if they don't see something tangible, mm -hmm. they don't know how to connect, you know, all the dots. But if they had focused a little bit more on the fact that there may be just one person out there, that their testimony mm -hmm. means life for that person or incredible encouragement, they right. would do it in a heartbeat. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like if somebody's knocking on your door, it's almost right. like you got yes. to answer the door. Right. Well, there's not always someone out there that's dealing with drugs or something else. Right. Like your story yeah. had to touch, as I say, those someone's out there that, yeah. in your particular situation. They right. needed to hear Absolutely. what you had to say. Absolutely. And so you guys are open to anybody calling you and asking to give their testimony, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yes. And so I hope that's a lot of what this program will do today, twofold. I want people to be able to know about God's Stories yes. Radio so that they're like me and they can... Um, uh, on their walk, they can listen to the podcast and be encouraged and be given hope. So I hope that's one thing that happens. And then also I hope that viewers today will listen to this and say, God's impressing upon me to get out there and to give my testimony. All you got to do is call them. You don't have to go there in person. You can go there in person, but you can call them. If you have a story and God is prompting you today to tell your story, you need to be calling God's Stories Radio. They have testimonies too. And they have testimonies that they want to share with us very briefly. But we're going to have to take a break. When we get back from our break, we're going to hear from Tina. She has an incredible story, Fritz and Mike, and see how they came to know the Lord. So stay with us, and we'll be right back. Coming up next. I can still recount the times that I could hear the still small voice. Wow. And uh, wow. there's always those times where God is prompting you to do the right thing. And I think even if you're saved and you've and turn your back on God, or even if you're not saved, He still speaks to you Absolutely. in that small, still small voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, You're watching Barbara Beck on Welcome Home, where we share life-changing stories filled with hope. You're watching Barbara Beck on Welcome Home. You're part of us every time you watch. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. God Stories Radio is out there to give you hope, encouragement, and what was the other word? Comfort. Comfort. Hope, encouragement, and comfort. And so this is such a wonderful time to be able to spend with you three and to, to hear your hearts and to encourage our viewers today to listen. There's so much junk out there, guys. There's so much stuff we could be sure. looking at and listening to yeah. that is not helping build the kingdom, not helping grow our faith. When I listen to somebody's testimony, I grow personally closer to to the Lord. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, Mike, we use these churchy words like testimony and somebody out there mm -hmm. will be saying, what is a testimony? What, what does that even mean? How would you define, because you're asking for testimonies, right. what is a Christian testimony? Um, well, at first would be um, where you were, you know, what your life was about before Jesus, okay. as I say, uh, hit you with a two by four upside the head. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then... Um, and then as he takes you through and as he gets a hold of you and everything else, where he's taking you from there, right. from where you were to where he's taking out what he's done for you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that you can actually share with someone yeah. else that would, you know, say, open their eyes and say, well, who is this Jesus yeah. that you're doing this for? And um, I love that. And so what does it do, do you think, when we give our testimony? How, is it, how does it affect people? Obviously, it helps give them hope, encouragement and comfort. But what does it ultimately do? You know, it honors the Father. Right. Yes. Glorifies Father. And that's what yeah, we're all about, right? right? Yes. It's been our only agenda since we started. I know. I love that. It's so pure. And it's just such a wonderful, wonderful ministry. Tina, I've not listened to the guys' testimonies yet, mm -hmm. but I have listened to yours. Yes. And you have a profoundly impactful testimony. Just give us little bits and pieces of how you came to know the Lord, what your background was. So um, when I was about four years old, my uh, parents decided to send me to um, a Catholic school. 
And that was sort of my first experience with just getting to know God. Um, you know, so from the time of a small child, I knew I always believed in God, but I didn't have this relationship with Jesus. Um, and it wasn't until after my parents were divorced and we moved to the United States, my mother and I, that um, I really, you know, I kept inquiring, who is this Jesus? You know, tell me more about him. I, I want to know. And it's kind of unusual because I was a, a young child still. Um, but I really had a yearning to know him. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't until I was 18 that um, my best friend's mom led me to Christ. Mm, praise God. Yeah. Praise God. But you had a tough time. I did. Yeah. You want to just touch on a little bit of that? I don't want you to have to feel like you need to get into all the sort of details. But sometimes for viewers to hear somebody that's like you on the other side, like like Mike said. Yeah. It, it was it was difficult. Um, I feel like I had sort of an idyllic childhood in, you know, in England growing up because I was loved and, you know, I had parents that cared about me and so forth. Um, you know, my mom and I have had a difficult relationship um, growing up, but um, I always knew that she loved me and, you know, she always took really good care of me and so forth. It was just, I think, you know, we've had some difficulties with um, with other things and uh, when I moved to the States um, I think I got removed from my comfort mm -hmm. my place of comfort and security and I had to deal with things in my life that I wasn't prepared to deal with at such a young age um, uh, you know things that you don't expect to happen to you as a as a child yeah yeah and if our viewers want to hear more, here's what I want them to do. I want them to go to the website, God Stories Radio, click on show number 96. Six. Yeah. Is that Six. right? Yeah. And listen in detail to your testimony because honestly, it changed my life oh. hearing your story oh, wow. and to see how faithful you are and uh, what God has done in and through you. We can't help but hear a testimony like yours and be changed. So thank you for that and for the boldness in sharing that over the radio. And again, I encourage our viewers to, to go to listen to that. So thank you, thank you Tina. <laughs> Fritz, you have a testimony? I sure do, <laughs> but we don't have enough time. Oh, we I know, so, I wish we did. Uh, I'll just uh, touch on a few things, I guess. Um, you know, I, I came uh, from a pretty uh, privileged upbringing. My dad was very successful in real estate, and uh, so uh, I I didn't want for anything, but my dad made me work for everything, Good. And Good. Uh, which was great. Yeah. So I, I really uh, uh, developed some good work ethic mm -hmm. and whatnot, but... I was always um, that guy that thought I was going to be young forever, so I made choices based on that, uh, which were terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so as I got older, uh, I can still recount the times that I could hear the still small voice. Wow. And uh, yeah. there's always those times where God is prompting you to do the right thing. And I think even if you're saved and you've and turn your back on God, or even if you're not saved, He still speaks to you Absolutely. in that smell, still small voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can recount multiple times where He's He's done that, but uh, I chose to make other decisions and go my own way. So uh, 2010 seemed to be the year of the baseball bat up, or the two by four upside the head, as yeah. Mikey says. Right. You know, I uh, had to undergo my second open heart surgery. I had to. Uh, and uh, my wife and I had gotten divorced and left me with a special needs child who needed a liver and a kidney transplant. Mm. And um, as I as said before, I had reasoned in my mind, and I, I'll never make fun of people ever again that consider, you know, um, suicide or anything like that. It's a very serious subject yeah. right. to me and to and to Mikey and. Yeah. Uh, I had really reasoned it out. I sat down and planned it out, and I said, you know, my, my brother-in-law and, and, and sister are local. Mm. They'll take care of Aubrey. They'll make sure mm. she's fine. Mm. There won't anybody miss a miserable guy like no. me, you know. So I had lost the real estate business and, and went through a divorce and then yeah. uh, surgery that year and then on to mm. <laughs> my daughter getting the liver kidney transplant. Yeah. And that's when I met Mike that night. Uh, and he helped pull you out. At... Uh, yeah. Celebrate recovery right. at real life. I walked in. I met Mike. He's never left my side. And um, long story short, that's how God Stories Radio was birthed. And, yeah. Yeah. and kind of a testimony in my mm. 
right. in a nutshell there. Yeah. But uh, I think I'm number 54. That's right. what I was going to ask you. What number you are? <laughs> Testimony 54. number 54. It took them a long time. God Stories Radio. <laughs> Go to uh, number 54 to hear mm. more about Fritz's story. Um, you know, we're in a season of Thanksgiving here and just being Amen. grateful. I'm so grateful for your testimonies, for your stories, and how God is working in and through each one of you. Mike, you've got a great one, and we're almost out of time. Can you tell me bits and pieces of yours in a, like a minute? Okay. Um, <laughs> I was um, going through a second divorce, and um, was living high and thinking everything was fine. And then uh, she uttered the words, I want a divorce. Mm. And right then and there, uh, again, being the second time, uh, I figured that that was my two-by-four upside the head. Yeah. And uh, I asked, Why? Why is, you know, I was a good guy. I was yeah. a nice guy. Yeah. And he showed me early on that I was, uh, in those marriages, that I was the selfishness, mm -hmm. being self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. It was all about me. Yeah. So uh, I got the answer. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, being Christian, that's how he found me. And, uh, you know, I thought 2006 was going to be my worst year, and it was my best year because that's when he found me. Wow. Amen. Praise God. Um, you know, a lot of times people think they'll hear a testimony like yours and they'll see you up here. You're still, you're not without struggles, though, to this oh, no. day. Oh, Life no. is still tough. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, and, and I think that's real important to paint an authentic, real picture because there are a lot of millennials now that are starting to tune in and they don't want to hear you know, oh, once I received Jesus, now everything is great. <laughs> right. It's a whole lot better, but it's not a perfect life. And we still right. have to work to be faithful and to grow closer to him. And mm -hmm. one way to do that is through listening to others' testimonies. Yes. And I think if whether you're in a Bible study now, viewers or not, or maybe you're not even in a community going to church, I hope that you are. But one thing that you can do to grow in your faith is to surround yourself with Christian friends. Maybe you don't feel like you have any friends. Go to God Stories Radio and you'll have at least three friends that are here on the couch today you with bet. me today, uh, and they would love to hear your testimony and your story um, and, and love to have you come out to the house and, and to tell your story so that, two reasons, you can grow in your faith and you can help other people grow in your faith, and obviously that brings you closer to the Lord and it honors and glorifies God. That's what we're all about, and particularly during this Thanksgiving season. Find ways to be grateful. Find ways to get out of your self-pity parties that we all do from time to time, right, guys? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And we're sitting there feeling sorry for ourselves when all we really have to do is go out there and serve That's somebody. Right. What an easy thing that was for you to do in a way. I don't want to minimize it, but for you to be at the door greeting people. Look what you did, Mike, mm -hmm. yes. when you That's greeted right. Fritz. And changed his life forever or helped him get him on the trajectory of Saved Jesus. Him from it. Yes, absolutely. Isn't that funny that we're in our worst time of need that when we serve others, yes, it's everything's absolutely. all taken care of. Absolutely. Well, I want us to be encouraged today, viewers, to go and to serve and to do the things that God is calling you to do. This threesome today, they didn't have any idea that they would be in a ministry that was radio, radio related, even though they have other full-time jobs. They're in a ministry because they heard that still small voice and they said, yes, Lord. And now they're doing something that is probably impacting who knows how many people worldwide, 92 countries and all over the United States. So go, do something different, serve, um, be grateful for what God's given you, especially during these holiday season, this holiday season. And um, I forgot to mention too, Tina and Fritz gave me these beautiful flowers when they walked in the door. This is how they greeted me with these, uh, what, what a simple gesture and how much that touched my heart. So thank you for the flowers, Welcome. Tina, Fritz, Mike. <laughs> thank you for being here with us today and Thank all you. you're doing for God Stories Thank Radio. You. Any little final word? I know sometimes I cut people off and then they're like, oh, I wish I could have said something else. I just else. want to thank you personally for yes. taking time out of your busy schedule to give your testimony. Right. Oh, it yes. was my joy. Thank you for that. It was that, our Fred. joy as well and I know uh, it's touched it was. Uh, many. Well, and her there, session so is 166. Yes. 166. Yes. Thank you, Tina. Hashtag yes. 166. Hashtag 166. Um, <laughs> thanks again, guys, for being Thank here. Love you, so you all. Much, Love God Stories it. Radio. Be sure you go to that website. I don't want to take you away from television, but I do want to because I want you to listen to the radio. I want you to listen when you're in the car. I want you to listen when you're walking down the street, when you're lying down, when you're getting up. You need to be hearing others' testimonies so that you can grow in your faith. Uh, we've got more coming up, so stay with us. Hi, everyone. Thanks for visiting Johnny's Corner, and welcome to a whole new holiday season. Isn't this a great time of year? In fact, um, as of late, I've been singing the hymn, 
Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms hath led us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. I love that Thanksgiving hymn. And don't we have much to be thankful for? I'm thankful for your prayers. Oh my goodness, you friends prayed for me through the most arduous journeys over 2016. And it ended up uh, there at Indiana Wesleyan University where I spoke to the students in chapel and I talked about our Cause for Life internship program. And we got 40 signups, 40 students went right to the registration table and signed up to serve as interns with us in 2016. Oh my goodness, when I look at the new year coming just around the corner, my heart is filled to overflowing with so much gratitude to God. I'm also grateful that this past summer I was declared cancer free and that means I can, uh, <laughs> well, maybe even travel more, who knows? But it does mean that I am singing praises to God for his goodness and graciousness toward me and my husband, Ken, in that he has kept me healthy and given me strength and stamina, joy in my heart, messages to others that are anointed from the platform, and he's given me the great pleasure of seeing the gospel go forth with much success. But that's because of your prayers. This ministry is called Johnny and Friends for a good reason, because Johnny can't do it all by herself. No, the grace of God is what is required and friends like you. So let me hear from you. Um, let me know what you are thankful for. You can go to our radio page and drop me a line there, or you can go to our response page. However, I would just love to hear from you as well. So have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy celebrating the goodness and graciousness of God around your family table this November. Take care, and I'll see you again here at Johnny's Corner. Hi, this is Dr. Joel Hunter. I heard a story about a little boy one day who was working with his dad in the garden. The boy was trying with all of his might to pull out a huge weed, but he was failing. And his dad said, you're not using all your strength. So he tried again as hard as he could, but he couldn't make the weed budge. And his dad said, you're not using all your strength. And he said, yes, I am. You saw me straining. His dad said, no, you're not. I'm right here. And you didn't ask me to help. I'm the rest of your strength. Isaiah says in chapter 40, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When we're straining, trying to help someone, it's probably time to call and wait on the Lord. He's the rest of our strength. We bring you messages of hope and encouragement to fill your home here on Good Life 45, where hope happens. I hope you got a lot out of our program today. Why do you suppose we only focus on gratitude, being thankful around Thanksgiving and the holidays? Shouldn't we be practicing gratitude every single day? Well, every year I do Thanksgiving dinner at my house and we end up with anywhere from 25 to 30 people and I love it. One of the parts that is so much fun is a craft that my daughter Kristen did several years ago. She made Tom the turkey out of styrofoam balls and we all write what we're thankful for on the colorful construction paper feathers that she so lovingly cuts out. Time consuming, yes, but well worth it. My grandchildren love it. Throughout the years, we had to add a second turkey, Thomasina, that's Tom's wife, because Tom didn't have any more room for feathers. Everyone likes to look back on the feathers from years past and see what was said. It's almost become like a little family history. 
I will tell you that the biggest challenge, in case you're thinking of doing this with your families, is finding a place to store the turkeys throughout the year. They are huge and take up a lot of room. But Tom and Thomasina are worth it and have become such a great part of our Thanksgiving tradition. I'm grateful to Kristen for doing this, as she'll be the first person to tell you she's not crafty at all. But I'd say she did a pretty good job. If only we could remember to be thankful each day of the year and express our thanks to others and to God. God's word tells us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We would do well to remember that every time we pray. And that, dear friends, is our note of hope for today. Thanks so much for joining us, and God bless you. You just watched Welcome Home with Barbara Beck, a Good Life 45 original production. That makes you a part of our hope team here on Good Life 45, where hope happens.